Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live. That's right, live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York with A-Team Fridays. That's Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Fridays. Uh, next Friday, we should have somebody talking to you about 1031 exchanges. But today, we're talking about, sir, thriving a seller's market. Okay, because as I hear frustrations from agents all over the world, saying it's hard out there for buyers. It's challenging. I can't get my offers accepted. Well, guess what? Find more sellers. How about that? How about that? Cash me outside finding more sellers. How about that? Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today because it it is it is so frustrating out there. Thank you, Rachel. Um, it is so frustrating out there working with buyers and you got to have realistic expectations. Let them know like, Hey, we might write a dozen offers. We might write 20 offers, uh, depending on their terms and conditions. Uh, but you got to have a strategy for success. And for me, if sellers are selling, if homes are selling, if we need more inventory or houses to sell, what we need to do is prospect for sellers. So I would love to see any of your questions in the, uh, in, in the chat. Hello, Abigail. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Jeffrey. Great to see you guys. Well, I can't really see you. I can see your names up there, which is cool. So shout out. We got Jeffrey from, from New York city. We got Rachel. She's Queens, Long Island area. And we got Abigail Troutman, Charlotte, North Carolina folks. Uh, great place. A little warmer than Rochester, New York right now. So, where I wanted to start is with for sale by owners. And then I'm going to go into expireds and then I'm going to go into non owner occupied properties. And I'm going to give you ways to identify uh, expireds and non owner occupied properties. I have in the last six months, I got to really add it up. I'm going to say 12 transactions just from people who have investment properties that they want to liquidate. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to identify those, but these were past clients that I sold, sold them to, sold the properties to them a while ago for sale by owners, your strategy with for sale by owners. And in the past, look at, I know, I know I'm known for technology. I'm known for social media and that kind of stuff and video, but my career was built in the beginning with for sale by owners. These were my, my go-to <laughs> honeypot. When I first started, I used to grab the red and white signs out of the yard. And then go and knock on the door and be like, hey, everybody, uh, how are you doing? I'm here to, you know, list the house. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, you know, I know you didn't list it with an agent because you felt like perhaps our fee for service is too much. If I could show you a way that uh, our fee for service would be built right into the transaction, is that something uh, that you'd be interested in? Well, yeah, of course. And of course, net the same amount of money or more? Yes, of course. Can I come in? And I understand if you're in, in New York, we're still in a state of emergency. Uh, cold calling would be frowned upon. But in this market, if I got a for sale by owner and I'm working with five to eight uh, buyer clients, I am not going to list that for sale by owner. What I'm going to do, folks, is sell that for sale by owner to a buyer that I'm working with, right? I'm going to call them and say, here, we just do a little role play. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, hello, Mrs. Jones. Uh, I saw that you're selling your property uh, on, on your own on 123 Anywhere Street. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not calling to list a property. I'm sure you're being inundated with agents telling you how hot the market is and how you should list their house with your, your house with them and they'll get you the most money possible. Look it. I get it. You want to go on your own, do it yourself. Well, yeah, congratulations. I could provide you some tools to help you with that. I actually have a for sale by owner survival kit that I can help you with. Uh, but I have, and however many buyers you have, I have five pre-approved buyers that I'm currently working with. I'm not sure if your property will meet the discerning needs of my buyers. However, if I could come see the property, I could give you a better idea. And I promise I'm not even going to bring paperwork with me. You can frisk me at the door if you want. I'm not bringing any paperwork whatsoever. I'm just going to bring my phone, check out the property. If you let me take some pictures, that'd be great. Or any additional pictures that you have and can send me, that would be fantastic. Boom. Okay. I'm not trying to list the home. They are getting phone calls from everybody. 
They're getting letters. There's probably people knocking on the door because we have, you know, other parts of the country that are that are listening in here. Uh, Southern California. Rhonda, how you doing? Whoop. Southern California. Thanks for coming back, Rhonda. We appreciate you. Um, that's going to disappear in just a moment. Three, two, one. There it goes. Um, so if you can door knock, door knocking is the most effective way to prospect. Uh, and the reason is everybody's scared. Everybody's scared to knock on a door because nobody likes fear of failure and nobody likes to be rejected. So I saw that early on. I'm like, I'm going to door knock because you're sending a letter. You're, you're sending a messages on Facebook. If you can find them, you're, you're, you know, you're doing all these passive ways because you're scared that if they, you knock on the door, they're going to go, no, I'm not interested. Go away. So if you can door knock in your ear, I would, I would door knock and then, you know, set up the appointment. But if you can, um, if you're calling to show a for sale by owner, I would not, and again, talk to your broker, uh, but I wouldn't call that prospecting, right? It's calling, they offered their property for sale. You're calling to show it to a buyer that you're working with. Now, if you go there and you legit feel like you have a buyer that you could sell this property to, then I would set up a second appointment. You set up the second appointment, you go back with the buyer. Uh, well, is I mean, one more caveat. I would get a, a commission agreement signed that would say, you know, if the buyer that I'm working with buys your home, there is a fee for service due of X. And we're not going to talk about fee for services, but I can charge, you know, I can tell you that for entertainment purposes, if uh, on the buy side, I would usually charge 3%. Uh, there's no reason why when working with a for sale by owner, you can't charge four, five, or six, or seven, or eight, or whatever it is. It's whatever you can agree upon. And as long as they net what they're looking to net from the sale of the property, who cares? You're going to have to do both sides of the transaction anyways, uh, but you would work with the seller as a customer. You work for the buyer as a client, right? Your fiduciary duties to the buyer, um, the seller who wanted to represent themselves, they're going to ask you for your advice throughout the whole transaction, right? Write an offer, get it accepted. Oh, what do you think we should do with the inspection? Yeah, you know, do you think we should repair everything? Yeah, I would, right? <laughs> I can remember a for sale by owner I had where uh, the septic had to be replaced and I was representing the buyer. And he said, what do you think we should do? Should we replace the septic? Yeah, I would, right? $20,000. $20,000, folks, right? Where's the benefit of uh, not working with a, with a listing agent there? So just keep that in mind. Okay, that's step one, for sale by owners. You gotta think a little bit differently because everybody else is trying to list these properties. I have buyers that need properties to purchase, so why not just sell the for sale by owner? There's no other competition. You don't have to worry about multiple offers. You don't have to worry about escalation clauses. It works great. Right. And, and then you may pick up that seller client, that seller customer as a buyer client to where they're moving. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people relocate to places that are warmer. No, duh. Right. Uh, and I, I can, you can place a referral, right? I got three clients right now that are moving to Florida. I'm going to place a referral there. Um, if I had somebody moving to Charlotte, I might give Abigail uh, a call and say, Hey, Abigail, you know, she's, she's not in real estate yet. She's on the mortgage side, but she you knows a great agent probably that could help me out. So if you know somebody that could benefit from thriving in a seller's market, tag them in the comments below, uh, because we're going to get into some really groundbreaking stuff that you may not have heard of. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Ow, here we are. Uh, and I'm going to show you where I am, first of all, and, and this may look differently depending on your market, but I'm basically on our MLS's tax record known as realist. Okay. That's one step, but let me go to my MLS. We use matrix here locally. And so what I did ahead of time before we went live is I did a search for expired properties and you're like, oh, wow, really groundbreaking stuff, Jeremiah's. No, I did expireds and then I did old expireds. Okay. Cause the default would be the last 365 days, but I did from January, 2015 to January of 2020. Okay. And then the only other thing I did was a zip code one, four, six, two, six. That's where my office is located. I have 1,086 results or matches. Click that. Now 
these are all the properties that expired over the years. Um, and I'm just going to go into like, look at, if you want to make more money in real estate, there are a couple options, sell more houses or sell more expensive houses. Right. And, and I'll say this for, cause as I talk to agents, like in New York city and the major markets, you, they're like, Oh, but it's a million dollar listing. People are people. They're all human beings. Okay. Have confidence in yourself and know that you can go out and get any listing. I don't care what price it is. They're just people. Okay. All right. So let's go to Crimson Woods uh, Court. Look at this property. Look at guys. If you're not from Rochester and you're watching this, this is what you get for a million dollars in Rochester, a 7,000 square foot home on 9.8 acres. Okay. We're never too busy for your referrals. Uh, let me go here. This is the big dif difference maker. So this is the listing. Uh, this expired back in 2017, 2018. It was on the market for 237 days. So I'd go into the history. Now this tells me the history of the entire, pro hopefully your MLS, if you have matrix, you already have this, but depending on what you're using in your market, you should have something similar, which can tell you the history of that property or that parcel in your MLS. This is going to help you to know whether it's sold since it last expired. So if I go in here and I go, oh, dang it. <laughs> Look at what it sold for. Anyways, uh, it was relisted in 2019 for $7.99. Then I went $7.25. Then I went $6.99. And it finally sold for $5.10. Whoa, that gets me to know why it expired. It wasn't worth $9.99, but it sold for $5.10. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. I'm not gonna check that property. Do 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 do. The same property. I'm gonna move on again. All right, 55 Pine Creek Lane. Uh, this one sold during the pandemic. Somebody was hip to what I was doing. They listed it in June of 2020, and it sold. So it's gonna take some time. This is this is called digital door knocking, right? Digital prospecting. You're gonna go through these properties and see. Okay, that one sold. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Back in 2018, that one sold, that one sold. Boom, bottom, boom, boom, bottom. Hey, but this is quicker than actually door knocking, okay? So we're gonna go through, we're gonna find ones that haven't sold since then. And these more expensive ones are prospected quite often, but I'm gonna keep going. Do, 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 do. Feel free to post any questions in the comments as we are here. Do, 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 as we're waiting to find a good one. Oh, I remember that one. Sold new listing in 2019. 2020 this sold. I'm going to go to my single line display. Come back over here and go. Let's see here if I want to go next. Next. I feel good about this. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Let's see. Dang it. Okay, but you're going to go through these. I have a thousand properties to go through. When I find a property that hasn't sold, which I seem to be on a roll for a lot of properties that have sold, maybe I can uh, filter out the ones that haven't sold and with, a, with another... Yeah, I wish Stratus was as pretty. Well, it, 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 you know, it just depends on what you're using, but just go through. And if let's just say, cause I'm going to, for the sake of time, if this was one, I would take that and I would check it. Right. And I would go to the next one. So then I would, Oh, here we go. This is a good one. This one will be, would get checked. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the listing and then I, I do further analyzation as I go through all of these and you could have an, an assistant do this. You could have a virtual assistant do this. You could have your kids do this. Okay. We'll work for food and <laughs> for room and board. Um, so then I would look at the photos and I'd go, oh, okay, that's not bad because if I'm going to prospect something, I want to be sure that I have something nice, right? I'm not going to go to the bottom of the barrel. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. This freaking thing looks nice. Okay, look at those floors, photos look great. So it's probably just a matter of price. Doesn't matter to me, I'm gonna find out what happened. Uh, they're getting added to my list, right? Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom, boom. Go 
circle back to the history. Let's see here. All right, let me go back to the main screen. Well, main screen for a second here. So what you want to do with these, uh, you can, again, you can't door knock if you're in New York State, but you could send them a letter. Um, well, that all depends, too. Uh, but find a way to contact them that's not prospecting um, or wait until, you know, start creating this list. I believe, could you send out a letter? Talk to your broker. Uh, but I'm going to create a list. If you can prospect in your area, what I would do is go and knock on the door. Um, or if you can get their contact information, I would say, hey, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller for Cherry Creek Lane. It looks to me, and I'll speak slower so you guys can kind of write down the script. This is the script that I used for years, 2008, 2009, 2010. That's how I, I, how I survived that market. But I would say, oh, it, it looks to me like your property was on the market back in 2018. It should have sold, but didn't. Is that right? Pause, wait for a reply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had it back on the market. Didn't sell back then. Okay. What do you think that is? Again, open-ended question. Be quiet. Let them talk. Oh, well, you know, the market wasn't great, blah, blah, blah. Then I would bust out my statistics. And I would say, well, did you know that in the town of Greece, since... 2018 or 26, whenever they're, let's say 2016. Since 2016, the average sale price has increased 36.5%. So that property that you had on the market for 400,000 that didn't sell, just quick numbers, is worth 40 times 30 is $120,000 more, right? That's just 30%, but more than that. So you could, you could probably sell it for at least $100,000 more. Is that something you'd be interested in? Stay quiet. Let them answer. You know, I know it sounds like too it's too good to be true, but you know if you have some time, we could hop on a Zoom. I'd be happy to kind of break down the numbers for you, show you the data, show you everything, um, our market statistics, show you what sell what stuff is selling for in your in your neighborhood, your subdivision, your zip code, whatever the case may be, and then we can take it from there. Worst case scenario, you lose 15 minutes of your time, but you get educated by a real estate expert like myself. Okay? That's it. That's all you got to do uh, to get that, that appointment. So let me come back to the, come back over here to the screen share. So this is digital door knocking for expired. Now, here's the second part. Because, and this is something that I feel like not a lot of people are targeting at all. I'm going to go into the tax record and maybe, uh, Rachel, you could tell me for Stratus, what is the tax record side of it? What do they call that? So you can search the tax record. Uh, we use realist and I know a lot of other areas in the country also use realist, but whatever your tax record is, maybe you have your, your county clerk, you can do uh, research like this as well, but I created a customized search. Uh, I'm not going to look for owner name. I'm not going to look for mailing address. I picked the same zip code and then let me just make this a little smaller so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I have all this criteria that I can input here, but I focus, it's by town, village, county. Okay, well, it may be right now, uh, town, village, or county, but your MLS should have some kind of public tax record search uh, that you can do. And so for me, I'm like hyper concentrated with my prospecting efforts. And so here I do 14626 because if I'm going after expireds and I'm also searching, uh, this is searching for people who have rental properties and people who have rental properties, the billing address is going to be different from, uh, the, the tax billing address is going to be different from the property address. And some of your tax records should have owner occupied. Yes or no. So what I would do is owner occupied. No. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. Hold on, I'm going to make this smaller so you can see it. Do, 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 do. All right. Um, and then I, I added sale date as less than, so I didn't want properties that have sold in the last year, roughly. I have 1,579 matches. Do a search like this. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. 
Let's go. Boom. More than a thousand results exist for this search. And then what you would do is you can export your results like this. You can send out a mailer, you can send out a postcard, but basically, yeah, there it is. Um, this is telling me people who have properties that are non owner occupied or rentals. Uh, when I was telling you, I, I had previous clients they're they're liquidating all of their rental properties, right? That's a conversation that you can have, um, with current clients, but I would export the, the results or create labels or refine the search further. Um, so it's just showing you how to do that there. So what to do with it? Well, first start with your existing clients, any of them that you may know or have a conversation. Again, I'm going to give you a script ring, ring, ring. Oh, hello, Rachel. Yeah. How are things, man? How are things going? You know, the last year you have your small talk and then you say, you know, I know this market's crazy. I doubt you guys want to move, but who do you know that might have some rental properties? Because, uh, and again, I'm going back to my statistics. I would say properties in the city of Rochester have the average sale price has increased 54.6%. Yeah, you heard me right. 54.6% in the city of Rochester. So now is a good time to cash out on those rentals, especially with the moratorium on um, evictions and stuff like that. Like cash out now. Take that money if you want to roll it into maybe vacation rentals with the 1031 exchange. We could talk about that. But who do you know that has rental properties? Okay, because now we're talking about not just getting one listing. We're talking about getting one, two, three, five, right? Maybe they have a friend that has 10. Um, I have, I had one phone call to a past client who's like, really? That much? I sold one. He couldn't believe it. Now I, I have nine other transactions from this from this client and he just referred me to somebody else yesterday who has two more properties to sell who called me like hey jose said that uh the properties are selling in this area then he got 115 is he telling the truth and this is a guy he lives in new jersey owns property uh in rochester new york i'm like yeah what's the property address i look it up yeah you probably sell for 199 if it's in good shape and the guy's like okay when can we list it Okay, so it's just a mad, you know, educate people on the market realities and, and let them know, really, you, as much as we're in the market and we're saying, oh, it's, it's, just, it's crazy and you're saying it everywhere you go, there's still an education. You got to educate people on the market realities. And that comes with frequency again and again. You're on social media, you're doing videos, you're putting content out there. Send out a mailer to your existing clients with what the market's doing. Send out a postcard. And you just got to keep touching, keep touching them so that they know that it's out there and that's top of mind. And then the last thing you can do, it's not prospecting if you call existing clients, right? Call them up and say, hey, hello. Just like I said. Uh, whoops. I, I turned on my Facebook. So that's basically what I wanted to cover today. I'd like to keep it around 30 minutes. If you have any questions, I am open to help you sir thrive in the seller's market. Uh, again, I know I'm, I'm known for video technology and social media, but I built my foundation, uh, on door knocking, uh, Fizbo's to start, but then expired is what got me through 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Uh, I would door knock a lot, a lot of expires. And I'd like to think that that state of emergency should be going away soon. So now's the time to start compiling that data. Uh, what I would do is all the ones that haven't been listed, the really old expireds, get that list together, get it mapped out. So that as soon as it's lifted, pew, you're like at the starting gate, ready to go while your competition's like, oh, uh, we should do something to get some door knock, some uh, new listings. And you already got your, your plan in place, right? So your two options, old expireds. Um, as well as non-owner occupied properties. Well, the, and then the third one is uh, for sale by owners. Uh, but I'll say this in closing, when you're working with buyers right now, you need to educate them on the market realities, tell them what to expect, that you're gonna have multiple offers, you're gonna lose a lot of properties. Um, and then I would, I would have them sign an exclusive right to represent, okay? Know what that is? A buyer agency agreement. I would have them sign it in this market because it's just going to take one agent saying, Hey, I got this listing exclusive. Come over here. Come on.
come over here. And then you lose the buyer. Uh, I can tell you, I, I had a, a buyer that I was working with recently. Uh, we wrote an offer on something that she really loved. She had to have it, but she has 100% financing. She's, you know, small deposit kind of a scenario. She lost, she lost it. And I had told her that we're going to probably write 12 to 15 offers before you get one accepted. And I went to show a house to a different buyer like the, this past weekend. And she was there with another agent. Like it was back to back showings. And I'm like, she didn't want to make eye contact with me. I was like, oh no, you didn't. Right. And I feel like I'm the best buyer's agent on the planet earth. Um, I'm sorry, but that's how I feel because I'm confident in my abilities and that's how you should feel as well. So any other questions I see here? Um, we can do the search you're talking about in, in Remind. Yeah, Remind is, is, Remind is an excellent, let me bring that, that comment up here. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, Remind is an excellent resource for you guys. It'll also tell you uh, if they have a high sell score. Okay, and I'm blinded by the comment. Uh, it tells you if they have a high sell score as well. Uh, which is another, per, you know, and that's predictive analytics, uh, which you could you could use that. Uh, there's another uh, system or program called Revaluate. We're going to be talking about that in the coming weeks, where again it uses predictive analytics. You upload your database, and it uses all of these um, data points online that they can track. Right, data is the new currency, and so they'll say like this person is likely. I mean, they can predict when somebody's going to get pregnant by. <laughs> They're taking prenatal vitamins. They went and bought this, and they're searching online. So the, the predictive analytics is the future. When you see high sell scores, uh, th those are accurate. Uh, so reevaluate is one. And then if you're a Remax person, first.io, F-I-R-S-T dot I-O, uh, is, is another one. You upload your database on your phone. It tells you this person's likely to sell, and it, it helps you to concentrate your prospecting efforts uh, because those are your existing clients and you can call those immediately. So any other questions? How about RPR? Um, Rhonda, that, that's a good question. RPR, you could, it makes it harder to search the tax record. I use RPR all the time to educate them on the market realities, meaning how's the market doing? Uh, I use it for my seller reports. I use it for my, my buyer reports, all of that. I use RPR. Um, I don't use it necessarily to... I don't know if they do they have a likely to sell score in there. I don't think they do. Uh, but I use it for school reports, neighborhood reports, market activity reports for my open houses. Uh, fantastic. Okay. So if you have anything else, just put it in the comments. I monitor this um, and I will answer them. And if you have any other thing that you want us to talk about on Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday, we are happy to help you. Uh, let's see if I can get the right song. Here we go. Okay, Rhonda, you got Realist? Fantastic. Make it a great day, folks. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks.